Testimony Treasures, Volume 1, Chapter 42, Wiles of Satan Satan has great advantages. He possessed the wonderful intellectual power of an angel of which few form any just idea. Satan was conscious of his power, or he would not have engaged in a conflict with the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Satan closely watches events, and when he finds one who has a specially strong spirit of opposition to the truth of God, he will even reveal to him unfulfilled events, that he may more firmly secure himself a seat in his heart. He who did not hesitate to brave a conflict with him who holds creation as in his hand has malignity to persecute and deceive. He holds mortals in his snare at the present time. During his experience of nearly six thousand years, he has lost none of his skill and shrewdness. All this time he has been a close observer of all that concerns our race. Those who have bitterly opposed the truth of God, Satan uses as his mediums. To such he will appear in the assumed person and garb of another. It may be a friend of the medium." He will increase their faith by using the words of this friend and relating circumstances which are about to take place or which really have taken place and of which the medium knew nothing. Sometimes previous to a death or an accident, he gives a dream or, personating another, converses with the medium, even imparting knowledge by means of his suggestions. But it is wisdom from beneath and not from above. The wisdom taught by Satan is opposed to the truth, unless, to serve his purpose, he apparently clothes himself with a light which enshrouds angels. To a certain class of minds, he will come sanctioning a part of what Christ's followers believe to be truth, while he warns them to reject the other part as dangerous and fatal error. Satan is a master workman. His infernal wisdom he employs with good success. He is ready and able to teach those who reject the counsel of God against their own souls. The bait which he has found will avail in bringing souls into his net, that he may fasten his hellish grasp upon them. He will clothe with every possible good and make as attractive as possible. All who are thus ensnared will learn at a dreadful expense the folly of selling heaven and immortality, for a deception that is fatal in its consequences. Our adversary, the devil, is not void of wisdom or strength. He goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He will work with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Because they rejected the truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We have a powerful, deceptive foe with whom to contend, and our only safety is in him who is to come who will consume this arch-deceiver with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming.' 